have a quick look at Portrait Professional version 17. Something that's been around uh, for years and years and years is Portrait Professional and it's probably the most divisive bit of software in photography in that where well, you can see the picture flashing in the background there it turns normal looking people into well craft for dummies in some case it's worth you know just buying and have a have a quick go if you have a look at the different editions i went for the studio version and this has got quite a bit more than the basic version but it doesn't have the full batch mode which you have to pay 50 quid more for um you can launch it from lightroom it's a bit of a faff getting it there Right, so here's a picture of Emily from last year, Emily Bilby. Um, obviously, strong looking model, stunning hair and uh, features and everything. So, what I want to get out of this is just a shot where we use the skin softening and facial sculpturing and stuff like that. I will just do some very basic tweaks in Lightroom just to get us to where we want to be. And the final thing is, I'm just going to add a tone curve. I'm going to go into the middle of the forehead and just move the mouse upwards if you look at the, the curve control on the right i'm going to put it so her skin is on the plus one point just where i like it to be i mean you can go higher if you want brighter skin let's have a look at portrait professional then so if you've installed it and done the footwork to get it into lightroom it'll end up in here like uh, it doesn't automatically go into this area here like just about every other plugin in the world does you have to do it manually which is a bit of a ball ache but there you go. Pops up with the preferences. So let's get, make it a TIFF, 16 bit, whatever you want, really. Click edit. So this now opens up Portrait Professional. And it has a little look around for a face. So it's now scanning the face and looks for eyes, nose, lips, and jawlines and where the hairline is. So you tell it what sex it is and age. So female. So straight out of the box, it gives you a suggestion. So on the left-hand side, it's got all the different points which it's found. You can move these if they're a little bit wrong, if you're getting some weird sort of effects on the eyes, um, uh, that, that sort of thing. So first up, there's a touch-up brush up here, which is quite handy if you've got a few blemishes, which basic human beings do. So you can just have a quick brush over anything. Comes with a bunch of presets. Can save your own presets just like in Lightroom, so you can get a look you like, which you can apply to people. So I've got professional headshot there, which I've been, I've used on a few uh, headshot shoots just to help speed up the uh, skin softening and things like that. But I don't tend to use those. You've got options to sculpt the face, which is quite weird, especially when she's at an angle like this. Um, that's the original shape face and it's got quite a lot of things you can do these are presets you know reduce chin slim the nose a bit shorten the nose lengthen the neck uh, maybe if we went to fit so if we and then lengthen neck see what it does i guess the main one is uh, i'm going to go away from the presets but for each thing you can do uh, it's got a bunch of presets which you can just add, click on, try, just like you do in most um, editing softwares these days. But in this section you do have control over all the stuff that's going on. If you don't want any facial sculpting going on, you just click this button here, the on-off switch there, and it just zeroes everything. I think her, uh, her head's on a bit of an angle in this shot, which I picked on purpose. You know, I think space sculpting just doesn't work. Cause it's better for it's fairly straight on shots. So if we go back to up here, zoom to show face, it just zooms straight in. We'll hide that. And now we can just have a quick look at the skin. So you've got a master slider at the top, which fades things in and out. And then you can just do around the eyes, imperfections. It's kind of a just finds any pimples and things like that, thin wrinkles. Emily just doesn't have anything like that. Fine shadows. I quite like having fine shadows. It's places like around the nose here, uh, under the chin. It sort of helps, if you ask me. Okay, 
uh, remove pause. This is this is where you uh, if you remove the pause, this is where you start looking like um, you know, a robot. So I tend to have that switched off. I want to keep the pause there. Um, shine, quite handy if you've got a bit of uh, light coming in from the rear, like we have there. Let's see if I can just retouch that out a bit, just because I've still got the touch-up brush switched on. Um, another thing which is handy is you can actually view the mask where where the effect is taking place. So it's picked up pretty much all the skin but if you wanted to extend it a little bit it's got quite a bit, quite an intelligent brush which you can use obviously it makes them look like they're from a, a sci-fi movie um, but you might want to apply this color to the you know the arms as well so what you can do you can just draw whoops that should be okay that it does find edges pretty well like that and click OK on that and now our arms will have the same softening as the face does so if we go back in to the face skin smoothing down which is nice you can play around with the lighting actually you can add sort of lighting contrast I don't know if you can see what's happening there it just adds shadow and brightness in various parts I'm not sure it fits lighting does it just makes it look rubbish cheekbones will add a little bit of light on the cheekbones um, this one's quite nice so the shadow one so if you purposely position the lights like I do to add shadow on one side you can just enhance that a little bit like that so it's a little bit more shadow on the right side and uh, kept it bright on the, the left these kick things don't work very well just it's like a rim or a kicker light I mean if you want to add it add it uh, smoky eyes just adds a little bit of shadow around the eyes how increases so you get the you get the drift um, that's what the lighting does makeup you can add makeup to people so you can add whatever color lipstick you want you can find the eyelashes and add mascara um, there's all that sort of stuff which I've not bothered with because usually you're shooting people with nice makeup anyway um, eyes these have always been a bit of a pain to do so it is quite handy you can can wipe the surrounding of the eyes which is what I'm doing now let's just hide that clean the eyes if you go too clean it looks a bit fake um, whiten area you can see that just finds where the whites are in the eyes so you work your way through these sharpen them a little bit makes them a bit more piercing um, this is probably the one most people use in <laughs> brighten the iris or darken it. And it's quite clever because it does leave this dark ring around the outside effect. Um, eyes, mouth and nose, that's plumping mouths and things like that. It actually does stuff with hair if you want it to. Um, it's got some basic controls so you can edit the picture as well. So if we go to exposure, we can brighten the whole thing up or darken the whole thing down. I mean, if you if you if you firing it up from Lightroom, we'll have done all this stuff anyway. But what you do find sometimes these controls will brighten the skin too much, so you need to you know, bring it down. So I've just added a bit of con, uh, taking the brightness down, added a bit of contrast, vibrance, add more colour. I'm not sure what tone curve does, but you can add a vignette as well. But I think. The one on uh, Lightroom is infinitely better, so do it there. And if you want to, it's also got a way of masking the background out, so you can put them on a different background. So that's quite a handy tool to have, because Lightroom doesn't do that. Um, obviously Photoshop does it on one, RAW will do it for you as well. So when you've kind of finished, you just click on Return From Plugin. We have the Before and After. So we can then quickly zoom in, you can see what it's done. Now if we do the same on the uh, original shot, it wasn't the sharpest photo I've ever taken was it? But it does a lot very easily, whether it's tasteful or good is still up for debate really. Um, 
Is it worth 50 quid? If you find a way of streamlining your workflow with it, if you can get your, your workflow 10% faster, yeah, it's definitely worth it. If you, want, if you really want to go mad and make people look plastic and that becomes your look, <laughs> it's probably best avoided. But yeah, yeah, I think it was worth the, 40, the 49 quid I paid for it. So I hope that was useful, and let me know if you do decide to buy it. There's a free demo you can use, but you can't save anything from it, so that's a bit of a pain. Alright, thanks ever so much for watching. Bye.